a lot is like sometimes we have an image of the future, an ideal of what a future might look like. Mm -hmm. weekend and I am going to see my friend and yeah so it's going to be just like a picnic and we are going to head to this park called Cabarita Park so just someone just like walked past me so I feel kind of awkward but yeah so we're gonna head there and I already have my coffee and I had um some kimbap in the morning and I just had like a solo date with myself um it's been a while since I've done that and I just like realized that I really enjoy just like reading and I recently been reading a book as well and it's it's called this is how you heal and it really talks about like healing and um I guess self-love as well and I really can resonate it with it a lot because I think often as um if you're like a high achiever or like an INFJ or yeah you just we tend to be really hard on ourselves um especially when tough things happen in our life and yeah so I just wanted to share that with you and see you there Perfection and excellence are not the same thing. One is sought with the intention of how something will appear and the other is created with the intention of how it will actually be. There is a reason why we find mountain ranges so vast and so stunning. There is a reason we are moved to tears over a powerful vocal performance, a striking piece of art, why we often stand in reverence of nature or humanity itself. Beautiful things make us feel at peace and at ease. Visually, there is order and sense. Even when there isn't, there is a magnitude that makes it feel as though it might not have to make perfect sense in order to be extraordinary. We try to apply the same logic to our lives, that if we could make them appear as though they make sense, they will. However, we approach it the wrong way. The reality is that it is not an image that we can hold within our mind that it put us at ease. It has to be the actual, real, raw beauty that is often very imperfect. <laughs> I 
I know it seems as though success and happiness are so deeply intertwined that you could not possibly pursue one without creating the other. But our ideas surrounding what it means to be successful in the first place are highly inflated and ultimately pointless. To be successful is to live on your own terms, to find satisfaction in each day. That's all. Anything else you acquire on top of that is just gravy. It's not the point of your life. It's not a prerequisite for joy. You do not need to be successful. Similarly, you do not need to be beautiful to be loved. Success and beauty, while they fuel the world's most active and aggressive pursuits, are also capitalistic schemes. By some measure, they depend on you feeling not quite good enough, so you'll keep investing in improvement, not authentic improvement, but surface level improvement. It's a radical act of power to determine that you do not need to be successful and you don't need to be beautiful. Ironically, accepting this is, in itself, success and beauty in its truest form. So, I'm gonna be making breakfast. My portable blender is charging right now, so I'm just gonna make myself some Vegemite and crackers and cheese and avocado. So yeah, let's get to it. I forgot. I had some blueberries, um, blueberry bagels. So I feel like I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna put um, some Greek yogurt on it and some honey and some cinnamon. vanilla yogurt we should have some left and it's so good um yeah i'm gonna put that on the bagel this portable blender and I'm a bit scared it's from Kmart just put strawberries, banana and yogurt and soy milk and let's go I'm scared okay oh Oh 
to try. I'm thinking there's no way to take this out, so basically, I'm just trying to go for this. Okay, let's try. Mmm, that's so good. Mmm, that's how I recommend this. It just takes a few blends. But it's great for people who like live in an apartment or like don't have much space and you need something to go, like something to blend your food, your food, your smoothies. Yeah, bye. Hey guys, so I'm having my lunch now. I have some homemade bagel and some eggs yes. and just the coffee that I made at home. So yeah, I've been trying to like reset my day, my days I guess, um, and also start saving again because I've been eating out quite a bit. But I'm not complaining because um, I've been really enjoying like spending time with friends. Um, so yeah, I don't think I can, sorry, eat the egg without a knife. So make okay. it. Okay. So yeah, over the weekend I did like cut my hair. So as you can see, it's straighter than normal because they actually like blow dried it and everything so yeah um but i actually wanted to talk about like a book that i've been reading recently and it's called this is how you heal by brianna west hmm. okay mm. Mm. so i think the book is great for someone who's also going through like a quarter of life crisis and want to also learn about relationships and attachments to things and if you also need a bit of help with self-love as well and yeah i think it's it's really um the way that she writes it just feels like like an older sister like telling you like what she's like kind of learned and how to like move forward when you're going through like a tough time mm. Mm. Okay. My bagel now. So I have capers on it, which I love. Mmm. Mm hmm. This is so good. Mmm. 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 It's really refreshing. Um. There's one part of the book that I really liked and it said um, something along the line of we often like have an image in our head um, that helps us feel like more at ease um, what actually we need to focus on is the present moment like what is actually raw and real and that's where like the beauty that's where we can see the beauty of life um so i think it can relate to a lot is like sometimes we have an image of the future an ideal of what our future might look like um but the thing is like it's not actually real it's our attachment to what the future might be um for example you might have an image of what your future job might look like, um, your dream house, your 
idea of like a relationship with a certain person but I feel like we often forget that these are um, our ideals of what the future might be rather than what's happening and a lot of people a lot of us do live in the future with social media we paint an image of what our identity is like how we want people to perceive us and it's often not healthy because once someone attacks our character something that we feel like it doesn't really align with what we want people to view us as we we will like become defensive and instead of listening to what the person has to say um, because everyone has a very different opinion on like things so I think it's important for us to take a different perspective on um, what someone else I guess we have to consider the different types of viewpoints and perspectives.